Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about pulse width modulation. Now pulse width modulation or PWM as I'm going to abbreviate it to is the notion that we can encode data within a single uh, uh, signal uh, pattern if you like. So the idea here is that we're familiar with uh, uh, a signal being either a 1 or a 0. So at any given point we can measure a pin on, a, on a, an output pin on an ESP32 and we will determine that it either has a 1 or a 0 signal on it. What PWM does for us is encodes data into that signal by using the duration that the signal is high relative to the duration that the signal is low. So imagine, if you will, a signal that uh, 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 is constantly high. That has a value of 1. Imagine a signal that is constantly low. That has a value of 0. Now imagine a signal which is high for half the period and low for the remaining half of a period. What that would measure out as is one half, because if we define that the signal on the GPIO output pin is measured every period, then the duration that it's high relative to the duration that it's low gives us a value which is uh, between 0 and 1. So if we look at this diagram here, Imagine that we've got a period that repeats every one second. So the period value is one second. If I keep the signal high for half that period and then low for the remaining half of that period, then we could say that the ratio of high to low is a half or 0.5. Now this period then goes on and repeats and uh, if we measure uh, these succeeding periods and we measure the ratio of the high to low, what we get is a continuous analog signal, if you like, of the duration of the of the value between zero and one. Now if the signal were high for a quarter of a second and was low for the remaining three quarters of a second, then the ratio would be 0.25 or one quarter. So we would have encoded an analog valued signal of 0.25 on this. So if we got this repeating period and the duration which were high relative to the duration were low, we can encode a signal value between between 0 and 1 on that. Now, typically, the period that we measure isn't a second. It could be hundreds of times a second. And then the period of high to low would be fractions of that period. So the frequency is how often the period repeats and the value high relative to value low within that period is the signal that we are measuring. Now, the ESP32 has PWM encoding baked into it. In fact, it's got, I believe, eight channels of PWM output absolutely baked into it. So we can tell the ESP32 generate a period signal, so it would generate a signal every period that we tell it to, and that period could be is measured in hertz, so a minimum of once a second, but it could be up to kilohertz or megahertz. And then within that period, we specify another value called the duty cycle. So this is the second number I want to bring you aware of, the duty cycle. So the period is how often the frequency repeats, and the duty cycle is how long within that period the signal should be high versus low. Now we measure that in bits. So for example, imagine that we said that this period was one second. Now imagine that we said that this period could be measured in 10 bits, 11 bits, 12 bits, etc. So let's keep it simple. Let's call it 10 bits. 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. So if we said the duty cycle was 0, then it would be high for 0 and low for the remainder. So it would be constantly 0. If we said the duty cycle was the full 10 bits, or 1,023, then it would be high for the complete duration of the period and low for none of it. 
If we said the duty cycle was 512, then it would be high for half of the, of the period and low for the other. Half of 1024 is 512. So when we define pulse width modulation, we've got two primary factors to consider. One is the repetition of the period as a whole, that's the frequency at which the period repeats. And the second is the duty cycle, which is measured in bits, which would be then the finest grain granularity that we can break up our, duty, our period into. Now the ESP32 allows us to specify our bit size for our uh, duty cycle. We can have either 10 bits, 11 bits, 12 bits, 13 bits, 14 bits, or 15 bits. And the higher the number of bits we use, the finer grained granularity we can specify in our uh, duty cycle definition. All right, now all of this sounds very dry. Uh, it's fully written up in the ESP32 book, but if we uh, think it through, what we specify is the there's a timer which starts at zero and ticks up all the way to the duty cycle, uh, to the period maximum, and uh, that, 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 that the speed of that t timer is the uh, period value. So if we set a period of one hertz, it would take one second to count from zero to 1024 using a 10-bit signal. Or if our, if our period was 100 hertz, it would take one hundredth of a second to count from zero up to 1024. When we specify our duty cycle, that is the point at the counter counting up where the uh, signal flips from 1 to 0. And uh, that's about really all I can say to it. Now, from a programming perspective, we have primarily two APIs that we need to con consider. Uh, one is called timer config and the other is called channel config. The timer config, its core parameters include the bits, how many bits are going to be included in that. So that's the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15 bits, plus the frequency at which the signal repeats. So that would be 1 hertz, 100 hertz, 1000 hertz, whatever it might be. Uh, everything else can be pretty much left alone. And then we get into the channel configuration. And in the channel configuration, we specify which GPIO will be used for uh, sending the output of the signal. Let me zoom in on this. Which GPIO will be used for the output of the signal and what the initial duty cycle will be. Beyond that, once we set that up, this output signal will then be automatically generated by the ESP32 until such time as we change the duty cycle to change the, the output signal. All right, now you see this phrase LED C here. In the ESP32 documentation, the PWM function is also known as the LED controller, the light emitting diode controller, because what that Another purpose of the PWM signal is to be able to change the brightness of an LED. So how does that work? Well, if we imagine that we have a very high frequency of repetition, let's say 300 hertz. So every uh, one 300th of a second, one of these signals repeats. If we specify the duration of the duty cycle as not being 100%, then the pulse output will be on for a fraction of the time and off for the remaining time. Now that repeats every 300 times a second, or 300 times a second, then the result will be an approximation of an analog voltage, the average voltage output on the output of the, of the, to the LED will be a function of the duty cycle. All right, so having said that, let's look at a sample application. So this is an application which dims an LED. So initially, we set up our timer. We're going to repeat every 300 seconds. So the timer repeats 300 times a second. And we set the duty cycle on GPIO pin 4 to a initially be our default duty cycle, which is our minimum value, which will be 0. 
And then we go through a while loop, incrementing that duty cycle each period, each, each, uh, each, each moment. So I'm saying I want to count for a thousand milliseconds. So for one second, we'll go between zero and the maximum value of my duty cycle value. And then when we reach that, uh, that top range, we'll change direction and we'll start counting down. So the ESP32 is going to change the duty cycle on a PWM over a period of one second. So if we look now at the output LED, you should see it on the screen now, you can see that it starts dim, it grows brighter, and then grows down again from bright down to dim and back up again. So what we have here then is software driving the PWM, which uh, basically allows us to control the brightness of an LED. So we could do this in software. We could set up a timer and an interrupt, and we could manually change the value of the signal on the output. But once we've set up this PWM, we don't have to do anything further other than change its desired value. If we wanted to set the uh, the brightness to be 50%, we would set the duty cycle at 50%, and then uh, PWM would handle it from then on. So PWM gives us the hardware control. Now PWM, pulse width modification, has other capabilities. So for example, here is another application. I call this servo sweep. Now the idea here is that within PWM, we can control servo motors. So let me find a servo motor. And a servo motor is a physical motor where it accepts an incoming PWM signal. The period repeats every 20 milliseconds, but if the duration, the duty cycle is one millisecond in those 20 milliseconds, the motor is turned exactly in one direction. So let's call it always uh, to the far left. If the duty cycle is two milliseconds of the 20 milliseconds, the motor is turned to the far right. And if it's one and a half milliseconds out of the 20 milliseconds, it's 50% uh, of the way through its cycle and pro ratios thereof. So I can supply different duty cycles and cause the motor to turn in different directions. And that's what this guy does. This uh, 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 program sets up a frequency of 50 hertz. 50 hertz is a repetition of um, 50 times a second, which means 20 milliseconds per repetition. And here we can specify the minimum and maximum values of my uh, of my turning, and I change the value between those. So if I now drive this program, let me change it from being LED dimming to servo sweeping, and recompile my program, make flash monitor, recompile my program and push that out to my ESP32, what we'll find is that once I've deployed that, we should be able to see that on my electric motor here, my servo motor, it's now spinning, it's rotating from left to right. And that again is another example of pulse width modulation at work. Here we are changing the duty cycle and the duty cycle controls where the motor's position is pointing to. And currently uh, I'm sweeping it from its maximum to its minimum values. Uh, but you could imagine that this uh, rotation changed as a function of something else in your program, perhaps uh, as a result of orientation of an accelerometer or a slider or a potentiometer or some other mechanism. So this has been an illustration of PWM control in ESP32. Obviously, there's lots to be said about it. Uh, get the latest uh, documentation and read on the API calls, which are called, uh, let's see, what are they called? Lead C timer config to set the timer, Lead C channel config to set the duty cycle, Lead C set duty to update the duty cycle, and Lead C update duty to cause the previously set duty cycle to take effect. I hope you've seen something useful in this, and uh, I look forward to more of these technical tutorials in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.